Hello out there, everybody. Manny here at Area 503. And I hope you all have been well since our last video. Today, I was going to talk to you guys about some documents that I found on the CIA vaults detailing the existence of a joint Russian-Chinese UFO investigation back in 1990. Both my research and that video got sidetracked Stay on target. when I stumbled across something far more interesting. An obscure reference to the Tunguska event of 1908. I first spoke about the Tunguska event back in episode 9, so if you'd like a little bit more detail about it, check out that video. But for now, just a quick review. On June 30th, 1908, a massive explosion rocked the skies over the stony Tunguska River in northern Siberia. The shockwave from the explosion is estimated to have registered at a 5.0 on the Richter scale. The power of the explosion was estimated to be as high as 30 megatons. This event left over 2,000 square kilometers or 770 square miles of trees and forest land completely leveled and stripped of leaves and branches. God only knows what kind of wildlife was killed here, but it is rumored that at least three human beings lost their life. And considering the remoteness of this event, that's somewhat surprising. Anyhow, this huge chunk of land was completely devastated and nobody knows why. That is until 2008, when Sandia Labs in New Mexico claimed to have solved the puzzle. Sandia Labs, which is a U.S. National Nuclear Security Administration laboratory, by the way, used a sophisticated computer model to show that not only was the Tunguska event attributed to an aerial burst comet or meteor, but that such an object was actually much smaller than they had originally predicted. This 2008 study is by far the most popular and widely believed theory of what happened at Tunguska. But I gotta tell you guys, I've always had a problem with this theory. Let me tell you why. Now I know that the absence of proof is not proof, but if this was a meteor impact event, where's the meteor? Numerous expeditions have searched for a meteor from the event and none have been successful. And along those same lines, an event like this is sure to leave a significant impact on the environment, as we can see from the recent aerial drone footage of the Tunguska event site. I personally have a hard time signing off on the aerial burst comet or meteorite theory, unless we have that proverbial smoking gun of a meteorite or an impact crater. But we just don't have it. And so, Tunguska has remained an unsolved mystery, and it's always fascinated me. So you can imagine how excited I was when I saw the name Tunguska referred to in the CIA UFO files. And speaking of those CIA files, it looks like this original file was just an excerpt from a journal called Soviet Life, Volume 2, 1968. Ugh, this thing's hard on the eyes. Let's see if I can find an original copy. Ah, look at that. I was able to find it on Google Books. Let's find the appropriate section. Hmm. Unidentified flying objects. UFOs. No mistaking that headline. <laughs> and here we get a refreshingly blunt article that reads, UFOs. First the facts. Several striking and reliable UFO observations. And then, conclusions. Gosh. I wish journalists still wrote this way. Anyhow, the first four accounts are all different descriptions of UFO sightings across Russia. Then they talk about the growing number of UFO sightings globally. And then they go into accounts by a few celebrities and military personnel who also had UFO sightings. And then here towards the end, this article starts to get pretty interesting. Check this out. No prejudice. 
until recently, no scientific study of UFOs has been made in the Soviet Union. More than that, the prevailing and in my opinion mistaken view was that UFOs are common optical phenomenon in the Earth's atmosphere. And check out this next part. In 1968, the Naka Publishing House of the USSR Academy of Sciences is scheduled to bring out a book titled Populated Outer Space, edited by Boris Konstanov. Remember the title of that book and the name Boris Konstanov. We'll be talking about both of them again later. But for now, it looks like at the time of this article, the book was scheduled to be put out next year, and it's going to be a physics journal along with the collection of UFO sightings and feature segments from notable Russian physicists as well as US scientists. And there's even a small little bit in there by a guy named Joseph Hynek. <laughs> yeah, we know who you are, buddy. Sounds like an interesting book, but enough about it. Like I said, we'll talk about it again later. Back to the article. They continue by talking about an unofficial committee that is being formed to study the UFO phenomena. This committee, by the way, ended up being a KGB-fed propaganda machine. Go figure. Check out this last part. Guests from another world. The hypothesis that UFOs originate in other worlds, that they are flying craft from planets other than Earth, merits the most serious examination. Wow, dude. I couldn't agree with you more. And after all this talk of UFOs, we finally get to the reference of the Tunguska event. Check this out. The most remarkable UFO phenomenon is the famous Tunguski meteorite. In recent years, Soviet scientists have established that the Tunguski explosion had every parameter of an air nuclear blast. The USSR Academy of Sciences reports of Volume 172, Numbers 4 and 5, 1967, have studies by Alexei Zolotov to prove that the Tunguski body could not be a meteorite or a comet. In the summer of 1967, the Joint Institute of Nuclear Research at Dubna published a study by Vladimir Mekadov, who concludes that the Tunguski blast left considerable residual radioactivity. Finally, as recently as 1966, after analyzing the sum total of observation of the Tunguski body's flight, this writer showed that before the blast, the Tunguski body described in the atmosphere a tremendous arc of about 375 miles in extent in azimuth, that is, carried out a maneuver. All of these new results warrant the conclusion that the Tunguski body seems to have been an artificial flying craft from some other planet. Now this really amazes me because the writer of this article is publicly stating that they believe that the explosion over Tunguska was an alien ship that exploded for some reason. And in the article they cite a couple of studies which is great because it gives us a couple of leads to follow. The first is this Academy of Sciences report, and the second is this 1967 JINR study, which shows residual radioactivity at the Tunguska event site. I was able to track down original copies of the Academy of Sciences reports and have them translated, and they do indeed show that the Tunguska event could have been caused by an aerial burst nuke. So that checks out. However, I couldn't find a copy of the 1967 JINR report that showed radioactivity in Tunguska. I did find references to the study in numerous research papers and dissertations, so I'm guessing that copies of it are out there somewhere. I just couldn't find one. <laughs> Sorry guys, I tried my best. But you know what I did find? A study from 1994. In this study, scientists traveled to Tunguska and they collected tree ring samples. The samples returned some interesting data. Take a look at some of these pictures. The trees that had survived the Tunguska blast had showed damage in their tree rings the year of the explosion and accelerated growth in the direction of the blast for years to come afterwards. Samples of the trees that had been returned for micrograph study showed an increase of radiocarbons after the explosion as well. 
So it's pretty obvious to me that something significant happened at Tunguska, and there is more than enough evidence to question the airburst comet theory. But who am I to question the mighty Sandia Labs and their supercomputers? I'm Manny f***ing Six Fingers, that's who I am. <laughs> and I don't buy your story about some comet or meteorite. How do you explain the radioactivity left at Tunguska? How do you explain the lack of a meteor or crater? How do you explain the accelerated tree growth? Come on! I'd really like to know the answer to some of these questions, and if any of you have the answers, let me know in the comments section below. I found one more piece of interesting information about the Tunguska event. Remember earlier when we spoke about Boris Konstanov and his book Populated Outer Space? Well, I wanted to dig into old Boris a little bit more, and I found that his Wikipedia entry was suspiciously barren. I mean, for a guy who was very high up in the Russian government and was a noted scientist, it's remarkably difficult to find any information out about Boris, which is a red flag. And I also had a remarkably difficult time finding information about his book. And that's because sometimes it's referred to as populated outer space. Sometimes it's referred to as inhabited space. Sometimes it's referred to as the populated cosmos. And even other times it's referred to as its final published name of inhabited cosmos. This book was referenced from everyone from the Russian media to the U.S. intelligence services. So it seems like everybody was interested in this book. And why? Maybe it has something to do with the fact that the book wasn't simply a physics journal. In the book, Boris also claimed that the Tunguska event was a UFO. And they included several references to known and famous UFO sightings over Russia. And finally, in the book, they made the case that UFOs are most likely extraterrestrial life. So you can see why, even if people didn't believe what was published in the book, everybody was extremely interested to see what the book would say. In July of 1969, when the first editions of The Inhabited Cosmos were being printed, Boris Konstanov suddenly and unexplainedly passed away. He was dead at the age of 59. And through political maneuvering, the book was confiscated from the printers, and the reason that was given was that the book contained various pseudosciences such as UFOs that were akin to fables and which could in no way be published under the Academy's auspice. That sounds like a crock to me. <laughs> the book was altered and a censored version of it was released three years later. However, all references to UFOs and the Tunguska event were surprisingly missing. Hmm. One of the original authors stated after the fact, quote, our efforts to tell the truth about the UFO phenomena to a whole scientific community failed completely." End quote. Yeah, well, at least you didn't get whacked for trying to tell the truth like old Boris did, pal. <laughs> but seriously, there's no evidence that Boris got assassinated, but it sure seems questionable that he was going to release a book about UFOs and the Tunguska event, but then he mysteriously dies, and the book is pulled and it's gutted. I mean, that just sounds like the kind of heavy-handed stunt that the KGB would pull. In fact, the co-author of this book, who was asked to edit it after Boris passed away, later admitted that the KGB was involved in his lectures, so I assume he just said and did what they told him to do. That may have been why he survived his experience with the Tunguska event. I don't know about you guys, but I think that there's more than enough evidence to cast doubt on the aerial burst comet theory. I mean, it seems like there's just as much, if not more evidence, pointing towards an aerial burst nuke theory. But I think what we're really talking about here is a little cognitive dissidence. 
because once you accept that a nuclear explosion occurred in the atmosphere on the Earth in 1908, some 35 years plus before man created nuclear weapons, well then people really need to start asking themselves, how is that even remotely possible if it's not some form of alien life? I don't have any other explanation, do you? I just don't think that the majority of people are very comfortable with that implication. And so, we are prone to want to believe in any other possibility. Because the idea of an alien life form with advanced technology is downright terrifying. So any other concept, no matter how unrealistic, we will believe. But don't take my word for it. The links for all of my source material are down in the video description below. Use those links and go read the original material for yourself, then make up your own mind. Well guys, for now, that's all I've got on the Tunguska event. I'm sure I'm going to do a follow-up on it later, so watch for that video. What do you guys think happened at Tunguska? Was it a comet or meteor? Was it an alien ship that crashed and exploded? Was it two alien ships, one that shot down another one? Pew 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 pew! Let me know in the comments section below. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, you better just click that button. Because how else are you going to know when the latest Area 503 video comes out? <laughs> I'll catch y'all on the flip side. As always, this has been Manny at Area 503. And I wish you all the best until we meet again. And I am out of here to continue my search for universal truth.